The plasmid reticulum is an interconnected membranous tubules and they make and modify proteins if it's rough ER and synthesize lipids if it's smooth ER and it's continuous with the nuclear envelope but it's hollow inside and we call that lumen or cisternal space of the endoplasmic reticulum. RER or rough ER has the ribosomes on the surface of it and they synthesize the proteins and they also make the phospholipids and in the lumen the hollow inside of the rough ER proteins are modified by uh, folding and adding sugars and smooth ER SER The synthesis of carbohydrates, lipids, and steroid hormones occur. And this is also where detoxifi detoxification of poisons, like alcohol metabolism, occurs in the smooth ER. And they also store calcium ions. So what does Golgi apparatus, lysosome, vesicles, vacuoles, and peroxisome of the endomembrane system do? The Golgi, these are a series of flattened membranous sacs, and they modify, sort, tag, package, and distribute lipids and proteins, which are print to vesicles, which are used to transport or secrete. This is how your cell moves lipids and proteins around uh, its interior. And the vesicle, obviously, are the storage and transport vessels. And the cells secrete a lot of things, tend to have a lot of Golgi. So the glands and immune system cells have a lot of Golgi sacs. Lysosomes are involved in breakdown of proteins, polysaccharides, lipids, and nucleic acids, organelles, and germs if we're looking at immune cells. Uh, vacuoles, but these are larger than small vesicles, and these do not fuse with other organelles. They're just large sac that contains stuff. Uh, peroxisomes contain is you might have guessed hydrogen peroxide H2O2 for oxidizing and breaking down fatty acids and amino acids. So endomembrane system modify, package, transport lipids and proteins. Then why does cis face of Golgi face the ER? Well, it's because that's where things come from. Cis face has to face the ER because that's where it receives all the vesicles, packaged proteins, uh, lipids from the rough ER and smooth ER. Ribosomes on the rough ER synthesize the proteins. It gets modified in the lumen. How does it get modified? It gets modified with folding and attachment of sugars and it gets packaged into transport vesicles like seen here transport vesicles and then the proteins are then modified in the Golgi by adding sugars again many proteins are uh, glycoproteins and they sometimes have many many different types of pro uh, sugar molecules attached to them and then these Proteins, modifier proteins, are then again packaged into vesicles. In this case, this type, this is a transport vesicle that's going to turn into secretory vesicles over here. Because it fuses with the membrane and this protein gets presented on the plasma membrane. And all cells that secrete things, glands, immune, nervous, uh, system cells, 
at the synapse, they all secrete things, and this is the mechanism they use to do it. Then there's the, there are the mitochondria and chlor chloroplast. Mitochondria forms ATP from breakdown of glucose in a process known as cellular respiration. It's a, a double membrane uh, organelle, meaning it has inner membrane and has outer membrane. And it has its own ribosomes and its own DNA. And the chloroplast found, found in photosynthesizing organisms, they produce glucose from CO2, which their own plants, own mitochondria use to make ATP. And chloroplasts are also double membrane. Here's the outer membrane, and here's the inner, me inner membrane. And it also contains the, uh, its own ribosomes and DNA. So this, based on this idea that um, both mitochondria and chloroplasts containing their own genomes, some people came up with this idea of endosymbiosis. So symbiosis is a relationship in which two separate species live in close association and typically exhibit specific adaptation to each other. And endo, endo meaning within, symbiosis, refers to the relationship where one organism lives inside the other. So microbes that produce vitamin K in the human gut, that's an example of endosymbiosis. And in 1967, scientists named Lynn Margulis proposed mitochondria and chloroplast may have originated from, originated as separate organisms, but somehow got into a eukaryotic cell. And it was initially widely resisted, but now it's much more widely accepted. So differences between animal cells versus plant cells. Animal cells all have centrioles, centrosomes, lysosomes, and they're heterotrophic, meaning we need to eat, meaning we need to get glucose. Whereas plant cells have cell walls, chloroplasts, plasmodesmata, uh, plastids, and central vacuole, and are autotrophic meaning they make their own food. And the extracellular matrix of animal cells. Uh, animal cells release glycoproteins and collagen into extracellular space, which is space out here. All this space is extra extracellular matrix. And Collectively, we call that extracellular matrix uh, proteins. Um, blood clotting involves proteins of the ECM, blood clotting proteoglycans. So damaged vessels release tissue factor that binds to another factor in the extracellular matrix and platelets, which cause clotting, adhere to tissue factor. This isn't a very good uh, diagram of it, but uh, that's what the book has. And there are some uh, intracell intercellular junctions. There are four types of four types of junctions. One plasmodesma is a channel between cell wall of two adjacent plant cells. And they regulate and they allow movement of nutrients, water, and so on and so forth between two different cells. And the tight junctions are found in adjacent animal cells. And desmosomes join two animal cells together. Desmosome is found here. And the gap junction 
shown here, are often channels between two different animal cells. And they're made up of these proteins called connexin, which can be closed and which can be open. And when it opens, it functions as channel. It's just a way of adjacent cells to share material, nutrients, ions, so on and so forth. And so the function of the cell membrane, cell membrane defines the boundary of the cell and cells can control intake and excretion of things based on the fact that it has that the plasma membrane itself is dynamic and it is constantly in flux it's constantly changing it's flexible to change its shape also and carries marker for recognizing each other during an immune response and it carries also has the receptors for metabolism hormones and neurotransmitters for a case of neurons and these receptors activate upon binding or interacting with hormones and then they change the interior or the state or the response of the cell some receptors bind viruses as well ace2 receptor is an example ACE2 is for the angiotensin pathway, but it also binds SARS-CoV-2. SARS so how does uh, plasma membrane work? Uh, we refer to the plasma membrane as, as fluid and it's mosaic. It's a mosaic because it has many different things embedded in it. And plasma membrane, uh, phospho uh, membranes, uh, phospholipid, plasma membranes, phospholipids, carb uh, cholesterol and proteins and carbohydrates are able to flow and change positions, meaning it's moving laterally like this. They can move around back and forth and back and forth like this. They don't stay in one place. They don't have to. So phospholipid molecules and embedded proteins are able to diffuse rapidly and laterally, which is necessary for some enzymes, and transport molecules within the membrane. And this idea is very important for electron transport chain, which we'll discuss later in later chapters. And plasma membrane ranges from anywhere from 5 to 10 nanometer thick. Red blood cell has about 8 micrometer, red blood cells are about 8 micrometer thick. So it's about 1,000 times thicker than a plasma membrane. Uh, most abundant in the plasma membrane are the phospholipids, proteins, and carbohydrates. Uh, here's a glycolipid. It's a lipid that is has a, a sugar carbohydrate attached to it. Here's a uh, glycoprotein. It's a protein with carbohydrate attached to it. Here's a protein channel, just like we've, we've seen in uh, gap junctions. And here are the cholesterol molecule embedded. embedded in the membrane here also so it's a very dynamic uh, uh, organelle